Okay, so, uh, welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the pathology of asthma. Okay, so we've discussed that there are two phases to asthma, an immediate phase and a late phase. Now, the immediate phase is caused by uh, histamine leukotriene B4 and cystinyl leukotrienes. Okay, so the histamine is going to diffuse back from the um, lamina propria and it's going to act on H1 receptors on the surface of the smooth muscle cells in the smooth muscle cell layer which surrounds uh, the bronchus. Okay. Meanwhile, the cystinal leukotrienes are also going to activate contraction of the smooth muscle cells. And they also have a G-protein coupled receptor that is GQ coupled, the same as the H1 receptor, known as the leukotriene, whoops, cystinal leukotrienes, it needs to be cystinal leukotrienes. So the cystinal leukotriene receptor, and specifically the cystinal leukotriene receptor type 1 is uh, believed to be very, very important in uh, the pathology of asthma. Okay, so the cystinal leukotrienes, so leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4, they will all uh, work by binding to the cystinal leukotriene receptor and um, activating the GQ uh, cascade, which will then lead to contraction of the smooth muscle cell. Okay, so if this is happening in all of the smooth muscle cells which surround uh, the bronchi, then that's going to cause the constriction of all of the bronchi, okay? So you constrict all of your airways, okay? So that's the first way that you trigger obstruction of the airways, but there is more, it gets worse. So the first thing that happens in the immediate phase is that you get this bronchoconstriction due to the production of these cystinal leukotrienes and also um, the histamine release from the mast cells. However, uh, histamine in particular is going to activate the endothelial cells of the blood vessels, okay? So remember, in the lamina propria, there were these blood vessels. So let me get my picture of this back. So lamina propria had these blood vessels within it, okay? Now these blood vessels will have endothelial cells on their surface, okay? So histamine is going to diffuse over to these endothelial cells and cause type 1 activation of those endothelial cells, okay? And this is going to lead to the vasodilatation of the terminal arterioles, which lead to uh, these blood vessels, okay, which supply the bronchial wall, okay? So you're going to get vasodilatation, which will increase the blood flow uh, to this area, okay, to the lamina propria, and then you'll also get increased vascular permeability. So vascular permeability is going to increase, which means that fluid from the blood is going to leave the blood and go into the lamina propria. Now this will bring in proteins from the blood, such as complement proteins, coagulation factors, um, also the components of the calocrine kinin system, which will begin all sorts of cascades uh, within the lamina propria. Okay, so we're beginning the uh, inflammatory response, basically, uh, and we're initiating it to this allergen. So this is the allergic response. So uh, inflammatory exudase is going to form within the um, lamina propria. Now, this is going to cause the swelling of uh, the lamina propria. Okay, so you're going to get the lamina propria swelling, and you can imagine that if this swells, and the smooth muscle cell layer constricts, then that's going to constrict the lumen even more. So both of these things, both bronchoconstriction and the swelling of the lamina propria as you get the inflammatory response occurring within it, are going to lead to the obstruction of the lumen of the airways. Okay, and then finally, you're also going to get leukocyte extravasation, and the specific leukocyte that you start recruiting with type 1 activated endothelial cells is neutrophil. So you're going to bring neutrophil after neutrophil after neutrophil into uh, the lamina propria. Okay, now leukotriene B4 
is also involved in neutrophil recruitment. It's a very strong uh, neutrophil chemoattractant. So it's going to increase the neutrophil extravasation even more. So you're going to get neutrophils pouring into uh, the lamina propria as well. So you've got this inflammatory exudate, you've got neutrophils coming in, you've got vasodilatated blood vessels. So all of these things are going to lead to this um, expansion of the lamina propria, and it's going to just expand into the lumen, basically. So it's going to push the basement membrane back. Uh, and even if the smooth muscle cell layer wasn't contracting, that would cause the obstruction of the uh, lumen but it's made worse by the fact that you've got this smooth muscle cell contracting around it. So basically, both of these things, both the bronchoconstriction and the swelling that you're getting of the lamina propria, so all of these things here can be summarized into one thing, which is that you're getting the swelling of lamina propria, okay? And both these things, the swelling of the lamina propria and the bronchoconstriction are going to lead to obstruction of the airways. And this is the uh, classic symptom, this is the main symptom of an asthmatic attack. Okay, so you've got obstruction of the airways. Now, if you obstruct the airways, that is not good, because gas needs to flow through the airways to allow uh, fresh air to be brought in uh, to uh, the, well, into the alveoli and allow um, used air to be expired out successfully. So if you've got obstruction of the airways, then you're basically blocking the movement of gas. You're blocking uh, the respiratory cycle. Okay, so this leads to, firstly, uh, shortness of breath. So you're going to struggle to breathe, okay? And it's also going to lead to wheezing because... Um, as you expire, when you're expiring the air through this very small uh, pipe, and also inspiring as well, it's going to lead to odd sounds, and that's known as the wheezing, basically, that you hear. Okay, right. Uh, so, this is extremely dangerous because if it gets bad enough, then it can actually lead to um, respiratory failure, basically. So, it can lead to uh, asphyxiation, basically, which means death due to uh, problems with breathing. Okay, so, it could potentially lead to hypoxemia, which means too low blood level of oxygen, and then if the tissues, the peripheral tissues, are not getting enough oxygen, then this could, affect, could potentially lead to asphyxiation, which is a fancy word to mean dying because you are not breathing properly, basically. Uh, you can also call this respiratory failure, uh, because the respiratory system is failing uh, the rest of the organs of the body. Okay, right. So that is what happens in the immediate phase of an asthmatic attack. You get swelling of the lamina propria and contraction of the um, smooth muscle cells. And basically, you might ask, well, why is it doing this? Well, basically, the mast cells believe that they have found an antigen of some highly dangerous pathogen. Okay, and they are causing uh, the inflammatory response here to try and attack that pathogen, and they are constricting the um, um, airways by contracting the smooth muscle cells uh, in order to try and stop more of the pathogen from coming in through these airways, basically. It's to protect the alveoli and the deep respiratory tracts from infection, basically. So it's trying to protect you. The problem is it's protecting you against something that isn't ever going to harm you, or at least we don't think. No one has ever found any reason that pollen would actually harm you, but um, potentially there is something we're missing there. Okay. Um, however, that is what happens in an acute asthmatic attack. Okay. So... Let's now discuss the late phase of uh, the uh, asthmatic attack. So this is what happens slower, basically. So, uh, 
This will eventually sort itself out, okay? So the mast cells will run out of histamine to lose, and eventually the smooth muscle cells will relax back down. You'll open up the airways, okay? So uh, the immediate phase will sort itself out, usually even without treatment. However, there are many treatments that we have available to uh, try and open up the airways again to prevent asphyxiation, okay? That's the ultimate thing that we're trying to prevent. Okay, now, after the immediate phase, what's going to happen is the late phase, okay? And this is the phase where the destruction of the bronchioles and the bronchi is going to occur. Okay, so, basically, you remember the mast cells also secreted tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, we've seen what histamine and cystinal leukotrienes and leukotriene B4 does, uh, but we haven't seen what tumor necrosis factor alpha is going to do. Now, tumor necrosis factor alpha triggers what is known as type 2 activation of endothelial cells. So, histamine causes type 1 activation. Um, tumor necrosis factor alpha causes type 2 activation. Now, type 1 activation of endothelial cells occurs within minutes. Type 2 activation takes hours, basically, which is why this late phase takes much, much longer. Now, the reason is that type 1 activation doesn't involve any changes in gene expression. It involves just uh, making or exposing things that you already have. Okay, so you don't make any new proteins in order for type 1 activation to occur. Anything that you do have to make for type 1 activation of endothelial cells is um, just a lipid molecule, potentially. You don't have to make any proteins. The proteins that are needed for type 1 activation are already in the endothelial cells, and they just have to be activated, basically. Whereas in type 2 activation, you get uh, changes in the gene expression within the endothelial cells, okay? And this overall leads to more vasodilatation, it leads to increased vascular permeability even more, but more importantly for us, it's going to lead to the recruitment of a different type of leukocyte. So type 1 activated endothelial cells, they don't have a massive repertoire of leukocytes that they are capable of recruiting. They can recruit the neutrophil, uh, but with regards to everything else, forget it, basically. They can't recruit it. They can only bring in neutrophil after neutrophil after neutrophil after neutrophil. Neutrophil, whereas type 2 activated endothelial cells can bring in a far more impressive repertoire of uh, leukocytes, basically. And what's going to happen is they're going to bring in T helper 2 cells, okay?